Hello my dear friends, you're on the military summary channel and today we will discuss the situation in Ukraine on the 14th of July. Today we have a lot of very interesting updates, so let's start. And first we're going to start from the map of disposition of the Ukrainian forces and the Russian forces as well. Uh, this morning the Minister of Defense of Russian Federation reported that about the result of, th of 13th and 14th uh, impacts, uh, there were a lot of casualties from the Ukrainian side, so let's start. During this, uh, the last previous 24 hours, uh, the Russians impacted the 35th Marine Corps Brigade, Corps Brigade. Also, they impacted this one, 54th Mechanized Brigade. Also, they impacted uh, the forces in first, uh, 81st Air Mobile Brigade. And also, they impacted the Territory Defense Brigade number 109, somewhere near Kramatorsk. I was trying to search this Defense Brigade in this area, but I couldn't. I was trying, there is like 108 uh, 112th uh, ter Territorial Defense Brigade, mm, there is uh, 118th and so on, but I couldn't, found, couldn't find the 109. But uh, as a result of this impact, uh, the Russians managed to destroy up to 1,000 Ukrainian soldiers and up to 100 uh, pieces of equipped vehicles. As you can see, the damage is very big and the Ukraine had a lot of losses. Furthermore, if we're talking about this uh, 81st Airmobile Brigade, this one, um, the Russians didn't report about the specific losses of this brigade. But if you remember, I told you that um, a few days ago there was a very long term, uh, two days artillery preparation in this area. And uh, I told you that after two days of shelling of this area, the Russian soldiers who were located in this area reported that they were able to feel the, the they, were, they were able to smell the, um, the flesh of human flesh in this area. So I understand that the situation on the north from Slavinsk is very critical. If we discuss the geography of the shelling, we see that the Russians are shelling area near Slavinsk, they continue shelling the area near Artemovsk Bakhmut, uh, something new, we see that the Russians started shelling near Donetsk, uh, if we are talking about the 54th Mechanized Brigade, and of course the Russians continue shelling the forces that are located near Kherson, uh, this 35th uh, Marine Corps Brigade in this area. If we are talking about Chasofyar, our famous Chasofyar, not famous, I'm saying the cursed town, uh, because uh, during the previous week, this week, the Russians are shelling this area heavily. And if we're talking about this area, uh, the Russians managed to attack some headquarters so in this area, some base, some permanent base of 14th Mechanized Brigade. If we take a look at the real disposition of this 14th Mechanized Brigade, we see that their main location is near Kherson. So as I understand, this is the brigade, but as you know, brigades sometimes um, always consist of, of, of a few battalions. So as I understand, few battalions battalions were sent uh, to this area and those battalions were attacked by the Russians and they lost around 43 soldiers and around um, 170 were wounded. So that's a lot of losses as well. If we're talking about the south, uh, another result, the Russians achieved another result on the area near Krivoy Roh. Uh, the Russians uh, impacted uh, this motorized brigade, 16 motorized, 60s, 60s motorized brigade, and as a result of that impact, the Ukrainian lost around 30 soldiers, and around 37 of soldiers are wounded. Uh, now let's talk a little bit about Kharkiv. Uh, there were no impacts in this area. There are impacts all the time, but the Russians didn't report uh, about any result. Maybe they're going to do this a few days later, maybe tomorrow they will calculate the losses, the Ukrainian losses, and they will announce about them. If we're talking about Kharkiv area, there is uh, there is uh, soldiers, uh, there is a battalion by the name of Kraken. It's the special forces in this area, and uh, some soldiers, according to the Russian Ministry of Defense report, some soldiers refuse to continue fighting in this battalion Kraken. If you know this battalion Kraken, this brigade, Kraken Brigade, is uh, in, was involved uh, in the process of killing the Russian uh, prisoners of war. So, mm, and that's why we see that uh, the Russians uh, are trying to get these Kraken as much as possible, some kind of revenge. So that's why some soldiers from this battalion decided to leave this battalion and to join a 127th Defense Brigade. Uh, there was 
a lot of problems with that because uh, from Kharkiv some special forces, some special military police were sent to solve the issues and some sources are saying that there were even a battle and fighting between these soldiers and as I, uh, there, I don't know about the result uh, but as you can see uh, the situation here becomes more and more uh, difficult. Um, furthermore, if you're talking about the South, the Russians also impacted this 145th Artillery Brigade and as a result of this Artillery Brigade, um, the Ukrainians lost some, some equipment. Let's take a look. They destroyed some hangar and they destroyed uh, some uh, artillery systems but they didn't, uh, didn't provide any information about the number and the quantity of those uh, of those equipment they managed to destroy. Uh, furthermore, if we're talking about the headquarters of some of these brigades, the Russians managed to destroy it, um, the headquarters of 61st uh, Marine Corp, Corps of 18th Marine uh, Assault Marine Forces. Uh, they managed to destroy the 18th uh, Air Assault Brigade headquarters. Uh, they destroyed around three warehouses near Solidar, of ammunition and shell near Solidar. Uh, near Tianovka and near Nikolaev. So as you can see, the Russian continue their impacts and uh, as you can see, they changed the geography of the impacts. Here, the previous two weeks was uh, under the flag of the impacts against this area in the near between Slavyansk, Motors, Konstantinovka, Artyomov, Sivers. The Russians concentrated all their uh, impacts uh, towards this area, but now we see that starting this week, the Russians start shelling the south of Ukraine. Uh, there might be like two options or uh, two reasons why they're doing this. First of all, first one is that the Ukrainians announced about counteroffensive operation in this area. Uh, if you remember, Zelensky promised uh, to, uh, not just promised, he ordered to start offensive operation to, re to release and free the south. Maybe this is the reason why the Russians now concentrating in this area, trying to reduce the Ukrainians as much as possible. But uh, the second option is that maybe the Russians are planning to uh, continue their um, special military special operation in, in operation in Ukraine from the south. We we now we understand the Russian tactics. First they reach some wall, some defense wall of their enemy. Then they start to do some rocket impacts, shelling, trying to reduce the forces on this current front line. And after that they're doing small push and the entire front line collapse. They almost uh, they have almost completed with the this area. As we can see, the the number of their impacts reduced and the number of impacts in the south has been increased. So that's mean maybe this might be some kind of evidence that the Russians are planning to continue their military special operation from the south. So we'll see and we'll follow this situation as well. Now let's take a look uh, at the West Sources map, this area. And today we got more reports about this area, about the battles for Siversk and Solidar and Bakhmut. If you take a look at this map, you see that this map is not updated. Today we got reports that the Russians uh, finally established finally established total control over this area. Uh, a few days ago I told you that the Ukrainians left this area, but now they report that they managed not just to, like, to reach, to enter, but to clear and establish their own flag. And we discussed that the Russians entered some suburbs of Solidar. Uh, and this morning we got report that the Russians now are fighting near Yakov Yakovlevka and some sources announced that um, this evening the Russians managed to take control over this town as well so I will mark this uh, town just for better understanding as you can see the Charlie group has been almost collapsed in this area if we take a look at uh, Sporna we know that the Russians took control over Sporna a very long time ago but this map is not updated but now this is the situation as you can see there are still forces in below of Kanbiristova, Ukrainian forces. Uh, if we take a look at the map of this position, uh, there are still 18th Air Assault Brigade, 1st Battalion, and as we know, the, Rush, the Ukrainians moved there, they, uh, their 10th Mountain Brigade, and from this area they moved um, you know, towards uh, Kramatorsk 118th. So we can say, we can confirm that the forces located in Belagorovka Beristova is uh, almost encircled because for now uh, they, um, the way, the possibility to leave this area, um, the way they can use, uh, they don't have much options how to leave this area anymore because all this area is under crossfire, is under total fire control and uh, the losses of the retreat might, would, might be very high. Only if they're... Uh, 
decide to retreat from this area just on their foot and it's the only option for them now let's talk about Seversk because it's one of the most important because there were yesterday we got reports that Seversk has fallen or the Russians entered Seversk and so on and today we got more and more reports but uh, it's some kind of fog of war because to tell the truth um, it's very difficult to find the real picture in Seversk but today I got some map uh, this one and this map shows, this map was provided by the sources who reported yesterday that they managed to take, to enter Seversk. On the left side, on this area, uh, you see that it's some kind of uh, destination of the Russians after they established control over Strepovka. Uh, this one, we just discussed this area, this town, Strepovka. And as you can see, according to this map, the Russians are moving towards Yakovlevka and to moving, trying to encircle Pakrovsk and to attack Zelenopoli and Bakhmut in France. So uh, if we move these arrows from this map towards the West Sources map, the Russians are moving towards Yakovlevka. We have already marked this area and the second their destination is towards um, Pitgorodne and towards Bach trying to encircle Pakrovsk so they're trying to cut Pakrovsk to establish fire control over this road and the main idea of course to uh, move a little bit closer to Bakhmut by taking Pakrovsk under their control. Klinova is already under the Russians. We discussed this many times and this information is confirmed at least by the Russian sources map. If you take a look at the Russian source map, you're gonna see that Klinova is under their control. But for example, uh, Pakrovsk is still under the Ukrainians. Stryapovka, you see that is marked. Uh, this icon shows that there is fights in Yakovlevka, that the Russians are pushing there and so on. Now let's talk about Seversk. You see that uh, there are two arrows showing the uh, movements that the Russians did during the previous two days, few days. First one they did through uh, through this town, as we discussed, as we projected through Verkhnikamianskaya. This one, this were the first direction. And if you take a look at this map, you're going to see that the second one is from the north, but not from Serebrianka, but a little bit to the west from Serebrianka. So we can say that the second movement was from this direction. So as I understand, according to this map, the Russians managed to cross the Severus Kedayan screw one more time in this area to establish some bridgehead here. My projection was that they would do this a little bit to the west, maybe because of the fact that there are some forces and it's much more difficult to cross a river somewhere here. So that's why they decided to do this right after Serebrianka. Uh, how did they do this? Of course, uh, the only explanation I, I have that as soon as the Russians managed to establish control over Verkhnikamianska, this town, they fixed the Russians in Seversk. Uh, furthermore, they fixed everything, every, every movement, every reinforcements in this area. The same picture, the same situation they had from the south. Uh, if you take a look at this map, you're going to see the area where they crossed. Uh, this is our Serebrianka and the Russians used this uh, road, this one, to cross Seversky Donetsk and they entered this uh, field from this area. If you remember, uh, like a few months ago, the Russians uh, tried to do the same situation, but when they were trying to cross the river uh, on this area uh, near Bilogorovka, uh, in this back, they tried to do this in this area and then they tried to do this in this area, but they were defeated there. But as far as I understand, because of very high, big loss from the Ukrainians and because of uh, no army or maybe low morale and so on, the Russians managed to cross here and they attacked Severs from the north. And as I understand, as I understand uh, from this map, from this picture, I understand that the forces, the Ukrainian forces who are located in Severs is already in Cauldron. I'm not saying that there are a lot of soldiers, like thousands and so on, but even a few hundreds uh, is already in Cauldron and there's no way for them to evacuate from this area anymore. If you're talking about Severs, and according to information we have, the Russian sources are saying that they control uh, the biggest part of this town. Uh, as you can see, uh, Seversk is split with the river. You see this Bakhmut River. So as I understand, um, it's just my projection, some kind, maybe some kind of speculation, but I suppose that the Russians established control over this town of Seversk. So they control a very big part. I don't think that they managed to cross the river, but maybe they have already. And now they're doing some clearing operation in this area. Uh, let's update Grigoryevka and Belogorovka as well, just for better understanding of the situation. So we see that some forces is already in Cauldron. It's the force located in, in Serebrianka. Seversk is taken like uh, more than a half. And it's very bad because for now the Russians have very big possibilities to cross this river. I'm sure that they are going to do this or if they are not going to do this to cross, furthermore, they are able to move along the road. 
towards Vanivka, towards Pireznia, and just to clear everything on their way and to attack Solidar and Bakhmut from the north. So, as you can see, the situation for the Ukrainians are very critical and their front line has been collapsed. I'm sure that in a day or two we're going to see the entire collapsing on this front line. Furthermore, today we heard, maybe some of you didn't hear, but we know there is, uh, there is a small country in the middle of Europe, this one, uh, Serbia, and the president of this country today announced, uh, reported uh, about his vision of the situation, and he told uh, he was his words was to the West countries, and he told that as soon as um, Sever um, um, Solidar Bakhmut, Bakhmut falls, the Russians will continue their offensive operation. Then, after these towns, the Russians will take Slavyansk, Kramatorsk, Konstantinovka. After that, they're going to do some proposal for the West countries, and if they refuse, we are going to see hell on earth. Have now let's take a look at the Russian sources map one more time. Uh, there are also a lot of updates uh, about drones, as you can see, all along the front line, mainly on the north, starting from Izum Bridgehead towards the Lugansk, there are a lot of drones, Ukrainian drones, who were shut down during this week, during these days. As I understand, the Ukrainians are doing some reco. Uh, we understand that sooner or later they're going to receive some new HIMAR systems. And as I understand, the Ukrainians now are searching the areas, the warehouses, the service centers of the Russians, and they're trying to find the new targets for the HIMARS impacts in this area. Uh, furthermore, uh, some better, uh, some. Um, Territory expansion updates. Uh, today, the Russians announced that they established control over Kamyanka. This was reported by the Ministry of Defense of DPR. This one, if you take a look at the West Sources map, this is the town right in front of Avdiivka. So let's update this map just for better understanding of the situation. Uh, no, Vilika Novosilovka Druga was taken a long time ago. Uh, the West Source map is not updated. So the Russians are reached Avdiivka right in front. So as I see, maybe they are also planning to do something with Avdiivka. Furthermore, I do this conclusion also on the fact that if we take a look at the disposition map, uh, this morning the Russian Ministry of Defense reported that they managed to attack 54th mechanized brigades. Um, they didn't tell the exact losses of this brigade, they just told about the losses of four brigades, and as I told in the beginning, it's around 1,000 of soldiers and around 100 of vehicles. So maybe the Russians will try to do something in Avdiivka as soon as uh, this area is going to fall, or something like this. Uh, furthermore, there is another few updates on the map about the expansion. If we are talking about the south, the Russians took control over this town, Oktyabr, and over uh, Novodonetska, these two towns. If you take a look at the West Sources map, uh, there is some differences. Uh, for example, uh, Niskuchne, this one, is under the Ukrainians. But according to the Russian sources map, Niskuchina is under control. Uh, Oktyabr is under the Russians, according to this map as well, this one. And the second town is Novodonetsk. The West source map shows that this town is under the Russians as well. Uh, it's about the some progress on the south. And uh, let's take a look at the West sources map one more time. So as you can see, uh, now let's uh, some bad piece of news. Uh, Donetsk is under very heavy shelling. Today there was a uh, shelling of the center. There were a lot of killed people um, among civilians. Uh, young people, old people were killed during this uh, shelling. And uh, if we're talking about the Ukrainians, today there was another impact in Vinnytsia. There is no mark on this area. Maybe the West source map has been updated. Let's take a look. Yes, it's updated. There also was impact in the center with the rockets and uh, a lot of people were killed. Uh, the Russians uh, aimed some military object in this town, but there were casualties among civilians and among children as well. So it's not a very good situation, of course. And that's it for today. Uh, thank you for watching. Subscribe to my channel. Join my Patreon. Uh, put your likes. Uh, I remind you that Military Summer Channel condemns any violence in Ukraine. Have a good day. Bye-bye.